a very good morning to all the student of class 6 dear student today we will study the 20th chapter of social science named as key elements of a democratic government dear student we will study this chapter from the book our land our work so dear student let's begin with the chapter dear student very first you should know what are the learning objectives of the chapter or what you will learn in this chapter so let's discuss it as you can see in my screen very first you will learn about what is democracy what is the definition of democracy secondly you will learn about secondly you will learn about anti appetite struggle and thirdly you will learn about link between government and democracy what is the relation between government and democracy let's begin with the chapter 28 as you can i am sharing my content with you which will help you to understand the chapter more clearly so this is the chapter 28 key elements of a democratic government as you can see in my screen so very first we will discuss about some significant terms of the chapter as you as you can see in my screen and i am also highlighting it the first important term is dalits what is dalits so the down trodden people belonging to the so called lower castes is called dalits what is dalits the down trodden people belonging to the so called lower caste is called dalits the second important term is apartheid that is what is apartheid let's discuss it the second important term is apartheid that is racial segregation or separation based on race is called apartheid so dear student let's begin with the chapter very first we will learn about what is democracy so dear student as you can see in my screen democracy is the best form of government and it is why most of the countries of the world have adopted this form of government it requires some basic condition to be successful as mentioned below so let's discuss it very first important term is participation what is participation let's discuss it as you can see in my screen participation is the key element of democratic government what is the key uh, element of the democratic uh, government this is very important question so the answer is participation is the key element of a democratic government since democracy is a government of the people by the people and for for the people is called democracy so again this is very important definition what is democracy so the answer is democracy is a government of the people by the people and for the people is called democracy a government of the people logo ki government logo ke dwara aur logo ke liye kya kehlati hai democracy kehlati hai so this is very important definition of democracy in the absence of people participation democracy can never be real or not fruitful participation means the participation of the people in the running of the government in a democracy people are given the rights and opportunities to actively participate in the government activities at all levels without any distinction or discrimination so this is again very important feature of democracy in democracy p 
people are given to the right and opportunities to actively participate in the government activities at all level without any distinctions or discrimination universal adult franchises is the most popular form of participation which includes active participation in decision making and decision implementation process also so dear student let's move ahead so voting is the one way the people participate in the process of government so voting is the example of participation in the democracy so it is the way the people participate in the process of government jab government banti hai to hum usme vote karke apni government banane ke liye usme contribute karte hain people also participate by taking an interest in the working of the government and by criticizing it when required for example let's take an example in august 2005 a state government increased the price of electricity people re shorted to taking out of rallies and organization a signature campaigns the government had to yell to the people agitations people express their views in many ways like dharnas rallies strike signature campaigns etc media and television also play a role in discussing government issues and responsibilities social movements organized by the member of the minority communities dalit adivasis women and other often able to participate in this manner so voting is the good example of participation uh, participation in the government and the other example is when अगर गवर्नमेंट अपना इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बिल बढ़ाती है और वो आपको उससे आप आप उससे सेटिस्फाइड नहीं है तो आप सिग्नेचर कैंपियंस रैलीज धरना किसी के भी थ्रू गवर्नमेंट को उसके अगेंस्ट अपना इमोशन गवर्नमेंट के आगे रख सकते हैं सो पार्टिसिपेशन इज द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट की फीचर ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी let's discuss the second key element of the democracy that is accountability let's discuss it so the second important feature of accountability what is accountability dear student a democratic government is a responsible government the elected representatives are responsible for their action to the people because the democracy is for the people by the people that is why the elected represented are responsible for their action to the people if they do not perform according to the wishes of people they will not be elected again therefore all the representatives have to strive hard for the public welfare kyunki jo bhi representative chune jate hain wo kaun chunta hai log chunte hain to agar wo logo ke according kaam nahi karenge to next time election mein wo nahi jeet sakte isliye sabhi representative ko apne public welfare ke liye kaam karna hota hai so this is all about accountability let's understand the third important feature of democracy that is resolution of conflict let's understand it so conflicts and disputes are inevitable in society as well as in the country conflicts occur when people of different culture religions reasons or economic background do not get along with each other dear student 
people may use violent means to settle their differences this lead to fear and tension in an area or a region the government is responsible for helping to resolve conflicts for example during some religious celebration processions are taken out which lead to the conflicts the root of a processions may lead to a conflict the representatives of concerned community contacts the government officials in such case the police plays an important role by accompanying the processions and providing security to the processions the police thus ensures that violence of any kind does not happen so sometimes river to can become a source of conflicts uh, conflicts in two states so dear student कॉन्फ्लिक्ट किसी भी तरीके के हो सकते हैं वो दो स्टेट्स के बीच में हो सकते हैं वो दो लोगों के बीच में हो सकते हैं कॉन्फ्लिक्स किसी भी किसी भी जुलूस में हो सकते हैं वो कहीं पर भी हो सकते हैं सो लेट्स टेक एन एग्जांपल ऑफ रिवर कॉन्फ्लिक्स हाउ Sometimes river to can become a so as you can see in my screen conflicts between two states. So let's understand it. The Kaveri River has been a major conflict between Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. Karnataka uh, Kaveri River, though, जो बहुत famous state हैं that is Karnataka and Tamil Nadu उनके बीच झगड़े का conflicts का main cause है. How? Let's understand it. So, what is the conflict? Let's discuss it. The Krishna Raj Sagar Dam, which is in Karnataka, and the Metu Dam, which is in Tamil Nadu, have been constructed on the Kaveri River. So, do you know the dam? Number one, Krishna Raj Sagar Dam, which Karnataka में है and Metu Dam जो तमिलनाडु में है दोनों ही कावेरी रिवर पे बने हुए हैं कावेरी नदी पर बने हुए हैं the downstream dam in Tamil Nadu can be filled up only when water is released from the upstream dam in Karnataka therefore both state are unable to fulfill their needs for water this lead to conflicts so this is very important question what is the main reason of conflict between karnataka and tamil nadu so the answer is the downstream dam in tamil nadu can be filled up only when water is released from the upstream dam in karnataka therefore both state are unable to fulfill their water needs that's why the conflicts occur so the central government has to intervene and see that water is fairly shared by both state so isme central government us uh, intervene karti hai and interfere karti hai aur dono hi state ke liye ek fair decision leti hai so this is all about the third key feature of democracy which is resolution of aise do logo ke beech mein do state ke beech mein गवर्नमेंट के इंटरवेंशन से उनके कॉन्फ्लिक्ट रिजॉल्व होते हैं सो डेमोक्रेसी लोगों के बीच का स्टेट के बीच का डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स के बीच का या किसी भी तरीके के कॉन्फ्लिक्ट्स को रिजॉल्व करता है नंबर फोर्थ की फीचर ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी इज इक्वेलिटी एंड जस्टिस लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड इट a democratic government is committed to equality and justice the key ideal of democracy so this is again the important feature of democracy what a democratic government is committed to equality and justice the key ideal of democracy in fact equality is a pillar of democracy what is the pillar of democracy equality is the pillar of democracy 
in a democracy no discrimination is made on the basis of caste color creed or birth so kisi bhi tarike ka democracy ke andar discriminate kisi ko bhi nahi kiya jata hai agar kisi ki caste alag hai uske basis pe bhi nahi hota koi kala hai koi gora hai color ke basis pe nahi hota kisi bhi basis pe democracy ke andar kisi ko bhi discriminate nahi kiya jata hai only the merit is given importance in the democracy all are equal in eye of law and the same law applies to all the people all are given equal opportunities to hold public offices and nobody is given special treatment and nobody is above law sabhi logo ko equal opportunities di jati hai kisi bhi government officer ko hold, uh, office ko hold karne ki ya kisi bhi tarike ki equal opportunity har tarah ke logo ko di jati hai koi bhi kisi bhi law se upar nahi hota aur kisi ke sath bhi special koi treatment nahi kiya jata hai equality and justice are inseparable so justice means those social condition by which a harmonious coordination is made between individuals conduct and the welfare of the society there are four main form of justice that is social justice economic justice legal justice and पॉलिटिकल जस्टिस कितने तरीके के जस्टिस होते हैं चार तरीके के मेन जस्टिस होते हैं नंबर वन सोशल जस्टिस नंबर टू इकोनॉमिक जस्टिस नंबर थ्री लीगल जस्टिस एंड नंबर फोर पॉलिटिकल जस्टिस सो जस्टिस इज अ की एलिमेंट ऑफ अ डेमोक्रेटिक गवर्नमेंट वट इज द मेन की एलिमेंट ऑफ डेमोक्रेटिक गवर्नमेंट जस्टिस इज अ की एलिमेंट ऑफ अ डेमोक्रेटिक government let's discuss the social justice what is social justice so social justice exist in a society where all the individuals are treated equally and all human beings are provided with adequate opportunity for self development no discrimination is made on the basis of religion caste and color so this is all about social justice what social justice exist in a society where all the individuals are treated equally all human beings are provided with adequate opportunity for self development no discrimination is made on the base, basis of uh, religion caste and color let's discuss economic justice what is economic justice economic justice implies the equal opportunity provided to citizen to earn and spend money to meet the needs of the life what is economic justice economic justice implies the equal opportunity provided to citizens to earn and spend money to meet the needs of life अपनी लाइफ को सरवाइव करने के लिए कोई भी किसी भी सिटीजन को इक्वल अपॉर्चुनिटी पैसे कमाने की या पैसे खर्च करने की मिलती है बट द नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट जस्टिस की एलिमेंट इज लीगल जस्टिस व्हाट इज लीगल जस्टिस सो लीगल जस्टिस इज स्टेबलाइज बाय लॉ इन डेमोक्रेसी law and justice are two side of a same coin Dem in democracy law and justice are two sides of the same coin it is applied in two senses framing of just a law enforcement of law justly so the last and important a uh, form of justice is political justice political justice implies that people should have the opportunity to put their pressure on the government kisi ko bhi apni opportunity uh, uh, implies the people should have opportunity kisi ke paas bhi opportunity hoti hai ki wo government mein kisi bhi tarike ka pressure create kar paaye 
untouch untouchability was earlier practiced in india it is now banned by law the untouchables the um, the so called lower caste were denied education transport and medical facility and even the chance to offer prayers in the temple to pehle kya tha untouchability pehle india mein thi lekin use ab india mein ban kar diya gaya uske antargit kya tha lower caste ke log aate the jinhe एजुकेशन ट्रांसपोर्ट मेडिकल फैसिलिटी या किसी भी मंदिर में जाकर पूजा करने की फ्रीडम नहीं थी बट डॉक्टर अम्बेडकर एंड मेनी अदर रियलाइज दैट सच प्रैक्टिस मस्ट नॉट कंटिन्यू एंड दैट जस्टिस कैन ओनली बी अचीव वेन पीपल आर ट्रीटेड इक्वली तो डॉक्टर बी आर अम्बेडकर एंड बाकी लोगों ने ये uh, समझा ये रियलाइज किया कि इस तरीके की प्रैक्टिस इंडिया में नहीं होना चाहिए सभी को इक्वल राइट्स मिलने चाहिए सो द गवर्नमेंट आल्सो रिकॉग्नाइज दिस सो सेवरल स्पेशल प्रोविजन प्रोविजन हैव बीन मेड फॉर ग्रुप्स विद इन सोसाइटी दैट आर अन इक्वल सो द गवर्नमेंट has नाउ टेकन स्टेप टू प्रमोट द कॉज ऑफ वुमेन हु हैव बीन ट्रीटेड as in uh, in as to men as to as inflation to men since long so mahilaon ko aadmiyon ke equal rights milne chahiye aur untouchability jaisa koi bhi case india mein nahi rehna chahiye so these are some political issues and that comes under the political justice so dear student this is all about political justice let's understand the next learning objective of the chapter so dear student let's discuss anti apartheid struggle dear student the policy of as i am highlighting it the policy of racial discrimination is called apartheid nasli bhedbhav ki niti ko rangbhed kaha jata hai so this policy was followed for some time in the usa as well as in south africa is tarike ki jo niti thi लाइक एपेटाइट नीति जो थी एपेटाइट थी वो यूएसए और साउथ अफ्रीका दोनों जगह फॉलो की गई आफ्टर इंडिपेंडेंस द ब्लैक पीपल हैड टू स्ट्रगल फॉर लॉन्ग अगेन अगेंस्ट स्लेवरी व्हिच वाज बेस्ड ऑन रेसिकल डिस्क्रिमिनेशन इन द यूएसए ब्लैक पीपल्स काफी टाइम तक स्लेवरी के अगेंस्ट यूएसए में क्या करना पड़ा गुलामी करनी पड़ी रेसिकल डिस्क्रिमिनेशन यूएसए में हुआ सो प्रेसिडेंट अब्राहम लिंकन हैड टू सेक्रीफाइस हिज लाइफ इन ऑर्डर टू अबॉलिश दिस स्लेवरी सिस्टम इट टूक अनदर हाफ अ सेंचुरी फॉर द अफ्रीकन इन द यूएसए टू गेट रिड ऑफ रेसिकल डिस्क्रिमिनेशन एंड सेग्रीगेशन so do boys and his national association organize the anti apartheid movement and ultimately succeed in the ending racial discrimination and social segregation so who who succeed in the ending of racial discrimination and social segregation so the answer is du bois is and his national association du bois and his national association organized the anti apartheid movement and ultimately succeed in in, in ending racial discrimination and social segregation so apartheid was also practiced by the minority government of the white 
I am so sorry as I am highlighting it. Okay, now let's just start this. So, appetite was also practiced by the minority government of the whites in South Africa until 1994. South Africa was originally inhabited by the black people before the whites settled there. White people se pehle, wahan par black people settled there. So, prior to its independence, which, is, which happens in 1994, it was ruled by the white government. The black, Indian and colored people were not allowed to mix with each other or even to use common facilities like ambulance, transport system used by the white people. So non-whites were not allowed to vote. Non jo white nahi unhe vote bhi nahi kar sakte the. The white owned the best land while the black had to live on the worst land. White ko, white peoples ko sabse achhi land pe rehne ka adhikar tha, jabki black peoples bohati worst land mein rehte the. So the white spoke the Afrikaans language while the non-white peoples Zulu language. The non-whites were forced to learn and speak in Afrikaans. So, the African National Congress under the leadership of National Mandela, this is the pictorial part of National Mandela, fought the appetite system. Who fought against the appetite system? Appetite system? The national, the African National Congress leader Nelson Mandela fought against the appetite system. Finally, in 1994, South Africa become, became a democratic country in which people of all races were considered equally. Finally, just South Africa 1994 made a democratic banana country bana ta waha ke logo ko sabhi tarike ke logo ko black white sab tarike ke logo ko equally treat karna consider karna shuru ho gaya so again this is very important question in which year south africa became a democratic country so the answer is as you can see in my screen in 1994 south africa became a democratic country. The second important question is under uh, who, who fought against the appetite system? So the answer is the leader of African National Congress named as National Mandela fought against appetite system. So this is all about as I am removing it, the last feature of democracy, which is anti appetite struggle. Dear student, let's understand the last learning objective of the chapter that is links between government and democracy. What is the link between government and democracy? So, in the modern world, there is no place for dictatorship. So, the last learning objective of the chapter is links between government and democracy. What is the links between government and democracy? This is very important, which you should know. So, dear student, in the modern world, there is no place for Dictatorship as it is based on force and not on the will and sanction of the people. In democratic government, amicable res uh, resolution of conflict can be found by the people participation. In democracy, alone and high idea ideas of equality, justice and dignity are ensured. So, government officers are called public servant. Who called as public servant? 
dear student this is again very important question who called as public servants the government officers are called as public servants and are accountable for their actions and exercise authorities dear student government does not interfere in the personal life of the people so this is very important connection between democracy and government dear student so this is the end of the chapter this is all about the 28th chapter of the social science which is named as key element of a democratic government dear student we will study the next chapter in our next class thank you